It's Cold Wide World, your Wildlife Command Center YouTuber, and we've got a new series for you. Uh, it's our new baby hawk journey. Who doesn't like a baby hawk journey? I do. I like them. In this series, you're going to be meeting Dennis Sammy, who is a local master falconer and raptor propagator. Think I got that right? Specializes in goshawks. Michael is super busy today. Not available to film this. That's why you get my face right here. I have the pleasure of cleaning rattlesnake enclosures with him later this evening. Gosh, I can't wait to bring you guys that later. If you guys have a suggestion of a name for this little one, leave us a comment below. We'll be putting together a YouTube community poll and you'll be selecting what this one is going to be named. For now, he is Sir Poops a lot. And I really like that name. <laughs> Lastly, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for being you, and enjoy the video. Hey Cole. Yeah. Guess what today is? Uh, chicken day. Nope, different kinds of eggs. Today is collect the Harris Hawk eggs and take them to an incubator. We've got Harris Hawk eggs? Yes, we got several Harris Hawk eggs. And it's the pair of Harris Hawks that are horrible parents and never can incubate their own eggs. So, let's go pick eggs. <laughs> okay. So when we go in the next, Three gates. It needs to be fairly smooth. What could go wrong? Go to your right. Go to your right. Go in. Focus on the bird that's on the nest. Camera up high on the eggs. Some dirty eggs, dirty Harris Hawk eggs. Oh boy. Yeah, they're fine. So they dropped an egg on the ground yesterday and uh, it, it broke. They typically, these, this pair on, typically only lays three eggs at a time. I don't have high hopes for these eggs because they look pretty nasty and dirty, which means they may have gotten wet, which means they may have gotten cold, which means they may not hatch. What's this for? I don't want them to lay eggs again, so we give them a fake egg. It's a ceramic egg, and they'll sit on it, and as long as they're sitting on it, they won't lay again. So look, watch her. She's like, oh, thank you for putting an egg back for me. So we need to boogie because I've got a podcast at 1.30, and it takes us 30 minutes to drive down to DeSoto, where we're going. Dennis Sammy is a good friend of Wildlife Command Center. He has a propagation permit, but he's not going to be hatching any eggs this year, so he agreed to hatch our Harris Hawk eggs for us. Wow, got a little narrow here. Mm. Yeah, actually it looks like... Dennis has done something with the road a little bit here. Oh, it's he's not, done something with the road? That's yeah, this is not nearly as rough as it normally is. Well, one of the eggs somehow got kicked out of the nest and it broke. And these two, she only lays three eggs typically. And they, these two, last year we incubated them in our chicken incubator. One of them pipped and pipped halfway around and then it died in the shell. And then the other one, just wasn't strong enough to pip and it died in the shell and then the third one incubated halfway and then it died you know, so that chicken incubator just ain't good enough we've never been able to do before i'll chart 15 percent egg loss yeah or 15 percent weight loss in the, the total time that it incubation cool but i have to get uh fresh egg weight my hands are really cold. Where's your eggs at? They're in here. Oh, I, I covered them up. This is all old school. A friend of mine used to breed peregrines taught me how to do this. 57.8 grams. So I put a um, ceramic egg under her. Um, if, if these are not viable, then I'm gonna pull that ceramic egg probably uh, the last part of April. She'll double clutch right away, you know. 
even when I had 15 birds, I couldn't get any. I've got another pair that are that have successfully incubated their own eggs. I just don't need I just don't need hares hogs. You know? So I've, I've just kept I'm just hunting them and keeping them separate. I mean they're close to each other, but they're separated, so they don't mate. But you know if these don't turn, then I might put those two together and let them lay a clutch and then we'll see if we can't get something out of that. But, but what we really want to get is a hatch and you know, as soon as it starts pipping, we'd like to come video it. Well, I appreciate you. Thank you for taking this time. I mean, I know it's a lot of time and effort to, to get them. It this way. Yeah, yeah, I know. This is the old school way, but it's tried and true. It, it should work. Cool. Now that we got fresh eggs to work with. Yeah. So. All right. Well, we're going to hit the road. I got a podcast at 2 at 1.30. Okay. So it just hatched out yesterday? 2 o'clock last night. <laughs> 2 o'clock last night. Yeah. <laughs> so how long was the full incubation process? I'd have to figure it out. Has it been a month already? I, yeah. Yeah, it was uh, right at 29 to 30 days, something like that, 31. <laughs> it's I adorable. Had, yeah. The first few days are the most critical. He still got a little bit of yolk sac down there. It's just real tiny, so he won't have to be fed till tomorrow. But he may start wanting me to. You see, he's looking up. Those eyes are huge. Mm -hmm. Well, day they, one. They look like ET. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is for like hawks specifically or any birds really hawks parrots whatever they you hawks, know whatever parrots. they want to do gotcha. and these are bigger brooders for when you got more than one chick you know I, I ostriches up, yeah i put up the two or <laughs> i put up the two or three baby goshawks in there and this one will hold quite a few and we, we brought you two eggs originally right right one just wasn't like, i don't think it's fertile I, yesterday was the first time i could see through the eggshell whatever's in there they they do what they call a pull down like the last day or so of incubation you can see the air pocket start to move toward the side and it'll turn almost sideways and then the baby will come out then you can look at that and you can mark the lowest point or the highest point with the ink marker and it should come to either side of that to start the pip and then work his way around chickens and quail and stuff like that that's all easy to hatch but hawks are are more difficult harris hawks are not but it seems like we've had our problems with it mm -hmm. goss hawks are really touchy to incubate and really hard to raise the first week or so you know and once you get them by past seven or ten days they're a lot more resilient first few days you don't get any bone content into because it's, it's so small it'll mount, they need all the meat they can get. And, and the first day you feed it, it's only a piece of meat about the size of a BB. And that's it till the next feeding. You know, it's like eight, to eight hours later, 12 hours later, whatever your schedule is. And it gradually goes up from there, you know. And then once it's about five to seven days, you can start introducing little pieces of bone in there i don't introduce feathers and stuff like that till a little bit later yet because i want it to all be in their system instead of casting up a pellet you're using up a lot of room in their stomach that you don't need to you know mm -hmm. for the time being so so you know one of the crazy things about technicians i got all this knowledge everywhere all you gotta do is send me some pictures and call me you don't like to bother you you know you're a busy guy I don't like them to bother me either with, hey, I saw a Coca-Cola bottle on the side of the road. Do you think I should pick it up? No, I don't want those phone calls. <laughs> but I'm fixing to spend $1,500 on equipment. I do want that phone call. We are going to go pick up our new Wheel Pete Harris Hawk. Yeah. It's going to be controversial as F. Because we're going to do a hard imprint, which everyone in the falconry community hates. But... I'm going to prove everybody wrong how to do it right. So, stay tuned for this ride. What could go wrong? Good morning, neighbor. I hear music. Dennis must be out here somewhere. Oh. 
got that on camera. <laughs> okay. How are you, man? I'm good. Yeah? Tired. Looking good over here. I'm working hard. Big holes here. Yeah. Air intake holes. Yeah. And uh, the emblem in front of the hood. But just think of how healthy it's keeping you mentally activated and stimulated. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I, that'd be tough for me too. You got company. What is this? You don't have to. This is a, a eggshell where sort of it's got enough DNA material on it. We could send it off to have it sexed. So what are you keeping him at? About 90 degrees? It's, I've been cutting it down just a little bit every day. Push that button and you'll be able to see what it is. I don't suppose I could borrow that for a little bit, huh? The brooder? Yeah. Yeah, you could borrow it for a little bit. I'll bring it back when he's about, you know, 15 days, he ought to be able to self-regulate. Because falconers in the future are going to look at this and they're going to go, how did you get it to hatch? And so this is the, where the egg started. Right. This is how many days we thought it would take to hatch the egg, and we wanted to try to keep the weight along this line as close as possible. That's right. That would, that would be right. idea. I've got charts where they're almost perfect mm -hmm. all the way through but mm -hmm. i was running two eggs and, and one was dry and you were trying to i was splitting the difference is mm -hmm. what i was trying to do so this is a this is a graph of the the egg that hatched it started at 59 grams it went a little dry then it went a little wet because the other egg right i was just in moisture right the other egg that didn't hatch because the shell was too hard and the animal mm -hmm. couldn't peep sure. out it ran dry the, whole, the time whole time in the same incubator. Right. And so that just gives you, that shows you why there's such a wide variety and variable when you're trying to hatch eggs because who knows? I mean, that's why 85% of the eggs don't hatch. Right. So I was determined I was going to hatch one for you this year. So, <laughs> I appreciate you it. You know, I, I went all out. I don't even know how many times a day, 10, 12, 15 times a day. And uh, Dennis finally had enough pressure with the camera being present. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so a little bit of backstory on this. We have a pair of Harris Hawks that are horrible parents. They've been laying eggs for the past four years. The first year, they laid eggs and hatched three young and ate all three of them. The second year, they laid eggs in February, and I think the eggs may have frozen or something. I brought them over to Dennis, and they died within short, short order. And then the third year, we had power failures. So we don't know if they were gonna hatch or not. But again, they laid the eggs in February, our storm month. This year, uh, they laid eggs in December. I just did away with those eggs because I was like, there's no way these are viable. And then they laid eggs again in late February. When, when was it we, we started that? March, March 8th. Uh, they laid eggs in March 8th. And so this is the fourth year and we got a pure Peruvian male, little bit tiny male. He, he weighs about 420 grams. And then we've got a Coulson female who was flying at 1,000 grams. So she was a fairly a bigger, well, medium size, mm -hmm. medium big Harris Hawk. Average, yeah. yeah, they've been fertilizing the eggs and we've had some viable eggs. We've just had horrible luck, I have, in getting the eggs to Dennis er, you know, Early. in time. Yeah. And so in this particular situation, we got them to him in March, which is about when uh, the Coulsons start hatching their, mm -hmm. their young Harris Hawks. You need to yeah. find one of these. I, okay. I've got two. Well, this is a great I, book, but I've got you. Yeah, but this is, <laughs> this is where I learned this in Megan. I understand. Is where yeah, I yeah. A lot of stuff. Yeah. This is like the Bible of breeding. Yeah. It's come from the Peregrine Fund. It tells you everything to do. Does it help look, with human breeding too? Should I be reading well, that? Let, let, me take, that. let me take a picture of the front of it real quick. I can find it. Dennis, thanks for all your hard work. Hey, no problem. Appreciate I, all the effort. I enjoy it. Yeah, it took a lot of work, but that's part of it. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't screw it up, Michael. Don't screw it up. Right. I like challenges. We have a baby Harris Hawk. And it, it really is a baby. Like in our industry, we don't say baby because it like brings those thoughts of baby humans. But this thing is so stinking cute. We're gonna use the term baby. Anyway, 
we need to come up with a name for this little guy or gal. We're not sure if it's a boy or a girl yet. We are going to send off the egg casing to have it DNA sexed to see <coughs> if it's a boy or a girl. But um, we definitely have to come up with a name for this little guy, girl, this little it, they. We'll have to come up for a name with them, for them. I'm like at a loss for pronouns right now. I don't know. Sam? No. Hi. It's got to be something super cool. I was thinking of gender neutral names. I'd like to see the Kentucky Fried Chicken now. All right, here we go. So we're going to start using intermittent feeding schedule. He's been on an hourly feeding schedule, which I don't like uh, because he starts to expect food on the hour, and that's why he makes noise. With intermit intermittent feeding, then you wake him up and you feed him, and he won't be calling like that, because we do not want that. That that little peep peep might seem cute to you, but uh-uh, not for me. We do have to come up with a name for it. They need to be named. Whatever name, YouTube and TikTok and Instagram comes up for him. Oh, well, you want to do that? That'd them. be good. Yep. Let's get Instagram, TikTok, and uh, YouTube, and we will find a name for them. And then maybe YouTube can vote on it, like the best entries. YouTube. Like yes. On the poll. So why don't you warm up some little misses, some mices, and we'll start feeding it. Well, we are a little over a week into existence. And this little one still doesn't have a name, but is doing well. He's being fed, or she, dub, not appropriate. It is being fed a healthy diet of tiny pinky rats. And it's hungry right now. And so is dub. <laughs> you wouldn't know how difficult it is to record a hawk and feed it at the same time. Doing pretty good. Oh. Yummy. Got a bloody, vicious carnivore face going on. Gotta give you a little bath. <laughs> 